But do you think we should be content in the theaters of Canada to be the small art form, to be the marginal art form? Do you think we should be content? We no. probably don't have a no. choice. Well, well, we're part of a, a, a an ecology. Um, and that is, I, in my time, I felt like I've seen it shift. Which way? Mm, both ways. Sometimes we're very hot. Sometimes we are the thing to do, in a sense. No, we're, not, we're not as big as, say, movies or TV, but we're very uh, prominent. And sometimes I've seen it dis you know, dissipate. Uh, prominent? Are we just hanging on by our fingertips? Well, sometimes. I mean, in 2008, we were pretty hot. It was good right. times. There were a lot of audience people coming out. We did a... We did the biggest season we'd ever done at Tarragon, for example. I mean, I just measure this by the thermometer of the Tarragon. And that was during the, the crash had happened. And every, I expected, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do now? Right? But, and we were, you, we were touring across the country. We were bringing shows back. We had was simply one of the best seasons we'd ever had for some reason. Uh, and then I saw it two years later drop off. Now, it had dropped off sooner for larger theaters. Uh, and I think maybe we're shifting again now. After Which some way? Time. Oh, to the good, to the good. Uh, the audiences seem to be coming back. They're not coming back like they were before, but, but they seem mean to be coming back to Ross Petty's Panto or coming back to uh, Forests and Remnants at the Tarragon? Um, all, by degree. And by, the reason why we're a 200 seat theater and do a certain kind of work as distinct from Ross Petty's Panto, which is, you know, Ross Petty's Panto runs for three weeks. We run for six weeks at 200 seats. This you know, um, uh, yeah, that, that's a lot of audience members to appeal to over six weeks. And, uh, you know, it can be as big as two weeks at the can stage, right? you know, that kind of thing. So, right. uh, yes, probably in the end more people do go to the Ross Petty sh show because it's a broader form of entertainment, it's a simpler form of entertainment. But it comes at Christmas time and people want to laugh and they want to bring their kids and it's a different uh, aesthetic experience. At the same time, I don't think everybody wants to l live at that level. Right. They might want that one night, and the next night they might want to come see Forrest or Scorched, right, and go and go through that experience. I mean, I know that we, for a while there, after we did Scorched, we did a little few too many plays about women being traumatized by the war, and right, people right. stopped going. <laughs> like right, it just right. like, okay, they're not going to come to this one. I mean, right. we've exhausted that. Um, uh, taste in the audience, right? Um, the, 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 the not everybody wants to see a play about that time over time. Right. Uh, yes, maybe in three years it'll come back again. It's, a, it's an important theme. The themes also change. The, the, the plays have a certain fashion, if you like, right? And you can't push, keep pushing the fashion because not everybody wants to wear jeans all the time. And right? you as a programmer of a theater, yeah. do you, are you aware of fashion things moving around in the outside world, uh, and what's being programmed, and how Richard puts together his oh, yeah. series? Of always. Always, the, all the time. All the time. So you've got 2008, too many plays about women being hurt by war, et cetera, et cetera, move on to another topic. Well, especially if you have something that's fashionable, like did, did very well in that, su in that subject. Right. You actually saturate an audience with that, inf that type of story. And it har it's hard to, for two years later for the same kind of story to come up and people to come to that. You'd think they would. You'd think they'd be interested. But they've kind of done it, right? And they did want to see it. Not that they didn't want to see it. They just don't want to see it again and again. They're looking for the, the next experience and the next investigation. And maybe that theme had been saturated and exhausted, and maybe two years later the times have changed. Right. And no people aren't as interested because... There's a relativity to the plays we do and the choices you make in a season that relates to what's going on in the zeitgeist. You know, you, uh, uh, I keep thinking, you know, of course, there's, I'm looking for now plays that are about men who are uh, abusing women because that's in the zeitgeist. But we can't be too so close to that, right? We also can't be too close to it because we do need the theater gives a little more distance because it brings deeper content, if you like, to, the, to those stories, I think. I believe that they do. Um, even more so than TV, right, which operates by a visual image or mm -hmm. talking heads or fit cinema, which is a visual image, and the content is um, a different kind of content. Well, you're certainly swimming against the tide. 
And me, yeah. personally, I'm yeah. thankful that you swim against the yeah. tide because the tide is drowning us. So I'm thankful. I mean, yeah. because there's little kind of there are rest places where the imagination can actually get engaged, and you can actually look at those yeah. layers because no one's selling you an answer. Sometimes more people come to that experience. Sometimes right. less, because the theater is a fashion, and various theaters operate by various fashions. Uh, I think there's actually something changing again. I mean, I I was I thought I thought actually you know you know, you look back at the history of theater and you go well. Shakespeare was hot for a while, and then 1604, 1605, they start to have, they go to Inigo Jones and Spectacles, and they're trying to sell that. Then they got the, uh, the Jacobeans at the tail end at do doing these plays. They start to turn in on themselves a bit more, and they're darker, nastier examinations of the human condition, and then they close the theaters. Now, the Puritans close the theaters. That is it. Maybe the Internet is the new Puritan. They'll just close the theater for a while, right? It's not as it would go away. Mm -hmm. Not as that we we might go underground. We might go poor. We might not make money at it, but it won't be that the thing goes away in the end. It'll resurface again and comes back in the restoration and a new kind, a different kind of theater surfaces to suit the needs of society. Um, and I did think for a while. I don't think that's the case now this year, at least. <laughs> um, but I did think for a while, it's like, we're just going to, well, this is maybe this is, the audience is dropping, it's diminishing. Maybe it's just we're going to end up closing. Maybe just, you know, that's okay, too. We had a great ride. I mean, from the 1950s to now in the Canadian theater scene, it's been remarkable growth. It has been, you know. But uh, I think one of the liabilities is uh, attention span. Well, that may be the new Puritan. Like, you know, like that being the new, uh, the, the, but anybody who's smart, We'll know how to pl play, it might not be me, but it might be the next generation, we'll know how to play with the different attention span of an audience because that is also an aesthetic right. that may demand, okay, uh, uh, a person needs to live uh, not just in watching this in the dark, but also on this. Yeah, why not make the, ba the last four rows in your audience for people who want to be you know, texting or looking at the screens, and they won't bother anybody in front of them. You know, we've already started. Bring your beer to your seat. We've already started. Yeah. Why? Why do we have to sit in rows in the dark? Why well, not have why, tables? Why not and have, have an food actor this? communicating to an audience member through their cell phone to the audience in the cell phone? Uh, or you know, yeah. uh, beginning that kind of everybody gets an iPad or cell phone or whatever, and you create the kind of an, another kind. Here's my subtext. This is what I think of that guy is talking right now, right? So you create another dimensionality or. You c I can contradict what he's saying because if we look into history, this happened in this country at this time, and you can take them on the net, surf the web, right, and take them on a journey. So, so the uh, I'm just saying the in the experience will be I with the re if there's a reduced attention span, the experience will be uh, you'll be operating with a different set of aesthetics, and someone might capture that. I keep thinking trying to find pl ways to do that, and I think maybe that's wh where restriction of money is. Uh, but the theater demands an intellectual, political, social, uh, emotional, uh, human content uh, operating on all those levels simultaneously. So if we're too close, if we're just doing a play, then we're just like the, the, the newspaper article. You know, like the newspaper articles tell us the story of whatever's happening and, um, in terms of men abusing women that's of the zeitgeist right now. And they kind of, you know, right. Bill Cosby does this and people, so many people charge him and now his wife is defending him. and. You keep going. Well, okay. Well, uh, you know, like when is actually let's go let's go past this. We can read that in the newspaper. The theater, I think, asks the audience to go deeper into that content about what might be more mythic, more profound issues between men and women that might cause men to do this to women, and might why women permit this, right? And that look at the issue more deeply. So when you say because you go into a dark room. Go black, you watch lights come up, and you're there for two hours. And you'd better be fascinating second by second. If it's too obvious, they just fall asleep or they check out. Or they you mean if it's too literal? Or too if literal. it's too on the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're being told what to think rather than you, a the audience, uh, investigating. Uh, network players. television uh, succeeds at being telling people what to think and being too literal only because they add on so much sugar and salt and fat and sauce, you know, in terms of sex, in terms of violence, in terms of music, that they feed on the literal because they don't know how to do anything else. 
network television. Yeah, but I not think cable also, television. Yeah, yeah. I think they also uh, provide um, uh, the same. There is no change in the plot from TV show to TV show. No. Network television, no. No, no. The, you, you continue. The, the, well, I think even most television, like stuff you see like on Netflix now, if you look at it and yeah. you go, yeah, well, actually, it's the same story over and over again and the same result over and over again. And I uh, personally, I get quite bored um, uh, because I can't stand watching the same credits every hour. Like, so I watch whatever so Kevin Spacey thing, and I, I went, you know, I, I sort of liked it at the beginning. I thought, oh, this is interesting. It was Richard III. And I actually went back and looked at Ian Richardson, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. House of Guards, whatever. And I thought, this is kind of... But even after that, after a while, I went, I, I can't stand hearing the same theme music. I can't stand watching the same credits. But so it started again. But, no, 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 you know, you realize, of course, they just want... that It provides continuity. This week didn't change from last week. And I don't believe the people actually watch TV formally. I believe they want this thing in the corner of the room going on all the time. They look at it, but you're not in a dark room necessarily. You can go to the fridge and get a beer. You can go make a sandwich. You can go to the bathroom. You can do like this. You can answer your phone while you're watching the TV set. Nothing much changes between the beginning of that TV show and the end, or if it goes through some bump, it returns back to safetyness. So it provides some kind of solace they're selling safety and, and security familiarity. and sameness That's the sale. Yeah. as a kind of security. These events will always happen, and the hero will always come out, or the heroine will always yeah. come out to the good. But that's the sales, right? But that, no one's going to watch TV if it's going right. to be un, uh, really but I disturbing don't think they or actually watch TV. You don't have to. Um, uh, you don't have to watch TV to know what happens. No. no so you can leave the room yeah. and do whatever you need yeah. to do. And I, oh yeah, I saw that TV show. And then you can say very well, I saw that TV show. What's the death of great narrative? That's all I say. It's yeah, a place yeah, where great yeah, actors yeah, go yeah, to die. And, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. 